Um, on Twitch, I have like slides and stuff. So it's up to you if you want to join for that. It's free, but totally up to you. Welcome Twitch. We're here. We've been here for 13 seconds. I'm sure you're all being forced to watch an ad right now. Tonight we are drinking a Baja Blast. I'd like to blast myself into the sun. Um, and we are reporting to you live from my sister's office. I still look so much better on TikTok than I do on Twitch. The beauty filters on TikTok are like actually terrifying. Like the way that they make us change the way we view ourselves is like unwell. Also, it says I have zero viewers, but I'm seeing that the chat is lighting up. So interesting. Oh, there it is. It caught up. It took a second. Pipeline complete. Pipeline complete. Oh my God. Why does this chair? Why does it? Oh my God. Um, do you have the hat? I do not. I am out of town right now. So I am hatless because I have very limited packing ability, but here we are. Um, we're going to talk about Nellie Bly today. We'll be lurking because I'm studying for my calc final tomorrow. Oh, I hope you pass. Wait, what's this about? This is about Nellie Bly. She investigated mental hospitals. Um, so I wanted to first acknowledge, oh my God, Crowzem, thank you for subscribing. Three months of paying you, but watching from the start, that means so much. My heart and my spirit. Had a baby in August. August, congratulations. First live stream since then. I'm honored. Is the baby with us? Is the baby in the room with us right now? Saw the TikTok, immediately followed you on Twitch. That's what I love to see. First time here. Welcome, Hannah Bonanza. Um, just listened to the pod about her. Can't wait to hear more. To Furrow Zombie, thank you. Jay and I are here. Hill, yeah. So I did want to acknowledge that originally I said I was going to do rail strikes, but then this was the problem is that I was getting so bored making it and I did not want to make it and I had no motivation. So I was like, if I'm not fucking into it, what are the chances anybody else is going to be fucking into it? You know what I mean? So then I was like, what's something that I am into? And then I was like, you know what I am into? I am feeling into Nellie Bly. I know the rail strikes are really important, but it just wasn't scratching the itch for me. And like, you know what I mean? You know when something like you think it's going to scratch the itch and then you're doing it and you're like, it's not. It's not meant to be. Exactly. Old Crone, thank you for subscribing with Prime. Shout out to everyone who subscribes with Prime. We love that. Also, if you're on TikTok right now, I'm also live on Twitch. Same username everywhere. Sorry, the camera is like this one's flipped and that one's not. So it looks like it, I'm having a conversation with myself and it's it's unwell. Look, I'm waving to myself and it's opposite. You guys can't see, but I can see. <laughs> um, but anyway, I'm live on Twitch where you can actually see my slides and stuff if you want to like keep up and I'll look at pictures and stuff like that. Worse when you're trying to find something to watch while you eat. Oh my God, I hate having to find something to watch while I fucking eat. It's the worst. How's your Wednesday treating you? Mine is shit. My Wednesday was good. Got my nails done. Peep the set. You can't see it because the lighting. TikTok can see it. Here, let me turn the light off for a sec. Oh, it's going to be like super dark. You're not going to be able to see it at all. Fuck. Here, I'll turn it all the way down. There you go. You can kind of see. See it? I love it. I'm obsessed with it. I'm crying over it. I love it. I'm so excited. I had to stay home sick from work, but glad I got to watch this. Oh my God. Just found out I have to manually resubscribe with Prime after a month. I know. Isn't that annoying? They should make it not that way. I forgot about your schedule and randomly clicked on Twitch now. Fate. We were just in sync. Like, Maybelline, we were just in sync like that. Oh my god, for a second I was like, wait, where the fuck is my phone? It's on there. That's where my phone is. Okay, but anyway, let's go ahead and get into it. Only four minutes in and we're getting started. My ADHD is literally quaking. Who is she? So today we're learning about Nellie Bly. I'm going to call her Nellie Bly for most of today, but her real name is Elizabeth Jane Cochran. Um, she was born in 1864, not the best time to be born in my opinion. Um, I would rather be born in the times of like Baja Blast and the internet and all that. Can my computer like stop sending me fucking emails and stop giving me notifications? Like shut the fuck up. And yeah, that actual Jessica, everyone is sick right now. It's really deeply concerning. Okay. Anyway, I digress. So she is known by her name, Nellie Bly. She was an American journalist, industrialist, inventor, and charity worker who is also mainly known for her breaking around the world in 72 days trip, which we're going to talk about. But the main thing we're going to talk about that I'm sure what all of you came here for 
is her work undercover to report a mental institution from within. She was a pioneer in the field and launched a, launched a new type of investigative journalism. Because now investigative journalism is like, we kind of know that as a thing. Like, it's like, oh, people go undercover. Like, it's a com not common, but you get what I'm saying. Like, pretty much everyone knows that that's a thing. Queen was a trailblazer. Queen was a trailblazer. She was, like, this was not common for people to do this. TikTok to Twitch pipeline? Did you make that your username because of me? Thank you for subscribing. Did you make that because of me or did you just make that to make that? Like, did you think of that before me? I can't get over how different I look in these two things. I wish you could see it. Like here on TikTok, I'm tan. My skin is perfect. My eyebrows are perfect. My hair looks perfect. And then on TikTok, it's like, or then I mean on Twitch, it's like, <laughs> first time with an actual Twitch account. Oh my God. Did you think of that because of me? I mean, you could have thought of it on your own. It's not like that serious. You're always pretty. Thank you. I am on Twitch. Twitch is better because, well, not, I, I look paler on Twitch, but it's a cooler platform because you can see my screen. But anyway, me trying to read and learn about literature to prepare for this stream. I fucking hate literature. I'm sorry. I'll say it. Sorry about that. Also, can y'all hear me okay? I didn't have a way to pack my mic here, so I'm just using Apple's vintage headphones. Um, so yeah, Lotus Silvera, thank you for subscribing with Prime. Um, but anyway, I was trying to read about Nellie Bly's like career as a writer and like the books she wrote and like all of that bullshit, but I just like literally don't care. Like I was reading about literature and I was like, okay, like I don't like, what do you want me to do with that? Like I, I hate novels. Like I can't do it. I don't know what's wrong with me. Nothing's wrong with me. We all learn in different ways, but I cannot focus on a story if it's not real or like based in like, does Twitch bleep you? No, not that I'm aware of. But anyway, I like, if it's not a real story, I don't give a shit. Like <laughs> her work about the mental hospital, I can read and I like it. But then like when I try and read a novel about somebody, unless it's like based in a historical time period I'm interested in or based on a real person's life, I'm like, why? Like, this is such a waste of time. Like, why did someone write this down? Like, it's literally not real. Who, who gives a fuck? I don't, does anyone else feel that way? Twitch filters comments. Yeah, I have auto moderation on, on Twitch. Um, oh, what does sub with Prime mean? So if you have Amazon Prime, you, you can log into Twitch via your Amazon Prime. And then you get a couple, like, you can subscribe to someone and you don't have to pay for it. Like, it's included with your Amazon membership. So I guess you are paying for it via your Amazon membership. But a lot of people don't know that that's part of it. Um, have you tried listening and reading at the same time? time it helps my ADHD I used to do that in high school but like it kind of just feels like torture because like I don't care like if I want to read something I can usually read it it's just stuff I'm not interested in I physically cannot read it so I have to do stuff like that and it just feels like I'm being tortured because I'm, it's just like all the information the boring info is coming for me at all, all levels Fraz put it best Fraz said I'm allergic to boring and I am I am allergic to boring I broke up with a guy because he hated cartoons since they weren't real. You might break up with me. I can watch them. I don't hate them. I just like, d it doesn't grab me, if that makes sense. Some cartoons I've liked, like some movies I like, like cartoon movies, like Disney ones. I like a lot of those. The only fiction I can ever do is historical fiction. Exactly. Y'all get it. Y'all get it. Do you have a podcast? Fuck yeah, I have a podcast. It's with Miss, Miss, blah, blah, blah. It's with Miss Frazzled. It's called Teacher Quit Talk. <clears throat> Bojack Horseman. That is funny. It did like, so I stopped watching it though because I got to like the depression seasons and I was like, I don't like watching you realize you're a terrible person or horse. You know, I was like, I have to deal with men in real life realizing things about themselves. So I don't need to do it on TV as well. I feel. Um... Oh, I love Bob's Burgers. I love Bob's Burgers. That's one of my favorite shows. Love Bob's Burgers. So cartoons, there's a few of them that I like, but generally speaking, they don't draw me in unless the writing is really, really funny. Then I can like overlook it being a cartoon. <laughs> um, true, we don't need horse baggage. Exactly. It's like there's enough real baggage. I don't need horse baggage. But anyway, back to Nellie Bly. So ADHD. Um, to everyone giving me the little hydrate 
things on here. All I have is Baja Blast because my water is being used to hold up my phone for the live. So that's not an option, unfortunately. Um, posture check, though. Y'all can check me on that. Y'all can check me on that. Bob's Burgers is like a hug. Okay, so let's talk about Nellie Bly's early life. Elizabeth Jane Cochran was born, like I said, 1864 in Cochran Mills. Um, her father, Michael Cochran, who was born in 1810, he had started out as a laborer and a mill worker before buying the local mill and most of the land surrounding it. So that's why she was born in Cochran Mills because her dad owned that shit. So she is like definitely an upper middle class person. Like it doesn't seem like her dad is like fucking at the tippity top number one industrialist gazillionaire, but like they had money. Um, he later became a merchant postmaster and associate justice at Corcoran Mills, which was named after him in Pennsylvania. So her dad was like kind of hot shit, but not like the hottest of shits. Um, her dad was married twice. He had 10 children with his first wife, Catherine Murphy, and then five more children with, um, including Elizabeth Corcoran, Nellie Bly, his 13th daughter with his second wife. Her, the second wife's name was Mary Jane Kennedy. Um, and Michael Cochran died in 1870 when Elizabeth was six. Can I be reborn with money? Nick Cannon. No, literally. Literally, Nick Cannon. It's like actually terrifying. I literally don't know how Twitch works. I apologize if I do something dumb. It's okay. Also, I keep getting these messages on Twitch where it's like possible, what is it? Possible ban evader, but... I've not really banned that many people and none of the people that have that message are ever doing something bad. So I don't know what's going on with that. 10 kids. No, literally now describing people as not the hottest of shits, but yeah, so he had a fuck ton of kids. She was one of them. Michael Cochran having 15 kids. My grandma was one of 13. Oh, I thought you meant one of the 13. I was like, your grandma is related to her. <laughs> I'm fucking an idiot. Like, y'all don't even know how stupid I am. <laughs> Your lives are exactly like an English teacher getting sidetracked like her students. They've been all over my TikTok feed lately. I'm so glad someone's finally acknowledging the, knee, the meme. I'm thinking about doing. Let me know if y'all would be against this. Oh, let me put it. Now that I know how to use the poll feature. Um... Hold on. I'm about to give you a poll on Twitch. Those of you on TikTok, you have to come to Twitch to vote in the poll. Okay. Starting the poll. Next slide, please. This is horrific. I'm giving you a poll. Should I do a sister wives analysis podcast? Those of you that are on TikTok right now, you have one minute to get to Twitch and vote in this poll if you want to vote in it. I'm sorry. I don't know how to do it on here. Should I do a live stream of, of the sister wives family? Like It's not going to be like a literal history. It's just going to be me picking apart different relationships and referring to different moments in the show. But I don't know if people would be into that. It sounds like people are fucking into it a thousand percent. Honestly, I'm feeling it like that might be a moment, but I have to wait until after all of the tell alls. Do you guys get what I mean though? Cause like I need to operate with all the information so it won't be for like three weeks, but, but the sister wives situation, I'm so stupid. I'm too stupid to get over Twitch valid. The poll has spoken 94%. Yes. Okay. Added to the list give a good amount of background oh absolutely I will so it'll be like I'll give basic information but it's not going to be like it's not just going to be a timeline it's going to be like here's a timeline so that you understand my analysis like you'll be able to so this is always my goal whenever I'm doing anything on twitch or live or whatever you should be able to engage in it with no background knowledge like I always try and make it to where you can know nothing and show up here and still enjoy it. You might enjoy it more if you know certain things. Like you can never make it perfect. You know what I mean? But I always, it's super important to me that anyone is able to join and engage with the content and like not have to be like, oh, I never learned this. I never watched this. Like that's just boring. Like, will you enjoy the sister wives analysis more if you've seen sister wives? Yes. But I'm going to make it to where you can still enjoy it. Um, I love, love these streams because I'm literally <laughs> stupid and I follow so easily so that's why I love it because I'm an idiot so I <laughs> that's how I make it good it's 
<laughs> I'm like, well, you're stupid, so think about what you would think, and then <laughs> suggest for what you would be confused about. I get so happy whenever I look about my nails. Sure, but what about Nellie Bly? Yes. So if this is your first time here, we get distracted every three minutes. Love you so much. But back to Nellie Bly. Um, okay, so childhood era. As a young girl, Elizabeth Cochran, Nellie Bly was often called Pinky. It's giving secession because she so frequently wore that color. As she became a teenager, she wanted to portray herself as a more sophisticated, and so she dropped the nickname and changed her surname to Cochran. Um, Barbara Cochran, maybe? Are they related? Question mark. In 1879 she enrolled at Indiana Normal School. Indiana Normal School feels like a really passive aggressive name. Like, oh, you can go to the normal school. Yeah, just normal. Yeah, just the regular school. Erin Martian, thank you for subscribing. You've been subscribed for eight months. That's like we could have had a baby together. We literally could have had a baby together. But anyway, Indiana University, like normal, normal school. But now Indiana University of Pennsylvania. What does that mean? Indiana University of Pennsylvania? Are you, is that, are you joking? Normal school meant a teaching school. Indiana University of Pennsylvania? Those are two different places. Like, I'm gaslighting myself right now. What does that mean? Indiana is a city in Pennsylvania. What? I hate that name. It just sounds wrong. Indiana is a town. Okay. I believe you. I'm just having a hard time accepting it. And the gag being Indiana and Pennsylvania don't touch each other. Okay. Thank you. I thought I was tripping. University of Massachusetts, NYC. That's what I'm saying. Like, stop. I, I don't like it. <laughs> I really don't. Okay. But anyway... She went to the Indiana Normal School because she was normal um, do, 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 for one term, but she was forced to drop out for lack of funds, which I find interesting because even though her dad was dead, I thought her dad was rich. Like, did he have his shit fucked up in his, the way he left his money, I guess? Um, <coughs> in 1880, Cochran's mother moved her family to Algany City, which was later annexed by the city of Pittsburgh. So that's how she ended up in Pittsburgh. But I also just find it interesting, like, how was her dad's money set up? I guess he had so many kids, he probably didn't have enough to for everyone's college. And I guess if it was she was a girl, people didn't really expect her to go to college. So that's probably why she had to drop out, I would guess. That's sad. He had 15 kids. Suck in him. Allegheny. Allegheny. IUP mascot is named Norm because of the old name. Norm. They probably all took the money and we'll, yeah, I think it's because she was a woman. It's interesting, but that's what I mean. There has to have been a reason or a story there. So let's get into her journalism career. Um, it was, she started working for the Pittsburgh Dispatch and it was for the Dispatch that she began using the name Nellie Bly. She got the name from a popular Stephen Foster song. Um, we're going to talk about the name more in a second, but her first articles were on the conditions of girls in working girls in Pittsburgh, slum life and similar topics, which kind of made her as like people start to notice her. You know what I mean? Like that was the thing people noticed. That's something that not a lot of people were talking about. Lean Wood, thank you for subscribing with Prime. Yeah. Everyone's saying sucking him dry. Stop. That is part of my name. I like it. Um, okay, but at a time when the women's contribution to the newspaper was generally confined to the women's pages, Conkren was given a rare opportunity to report on wider issues. Here is a picture of her. Working girls, like, had jobs or working girls? I think just had jobs, because during this time, a lot of women were working in factories in really, really unsafe conditions. Um, so I think that's what she was looking at. Oh my god, pipeline complete. Love seeing the TikTok to Twitch pipeline. We love this. But look at this picture of her. For those of you on TikTok with all the peace and love in the universe, I can't show you the picture. You have to join Twitch. Sorry, love you. Um, look at her. This is the fit. She's literally my... <laughs> the hat, the all black. We love. Okay, I feel like my slides are ordered here somehow. Oh no. They're not. I just put them different. I thought I did. Okay, sorry. So getting employed era and newspaper. This is how she got employed. That slide was early. That's what it was. <clears throat> I told you about her journalism career too early and I meant to go into more detail. 
Um, the, my Twitch is the first link in my link tree. Sorry. I just like kind of lost my shit for a second. I didn't love that. But yeah. We're gonna look at a Jenna Marbles main. Okay. So, so getting employed era. This is how she got her job at the Pittsburgh dispatch that I accidentally told you about too early. So a newspaper column titled what girls are good for in the Pittsburgh dispatch that reported that girls were principally for birthing children and keeping house promoted Elizabeth Cochran to write a response under the pseudonym pseudonym just means like fake name lonely orphan girl because remember her dad died but her mom's alive so I feel like that's a little bit misleading um anyway the editor of the magazine because she basically wrote this letter being like fuck you bitch women are everything so the editor of the magazine George Madden was impressed with her passion and ran an advertisement asking for the author to identify herself. So he was like, love your work, come forward, TTYL. And then when Cochran introduced herself, he offered her the opportunity to write a piece for the newspaper under the pseudonym Lonely Orphan Girl. And her first article for the dispatch titled The Girl Puzzle argued that not all women would marry and that was needed, and that was what was needed were or bad jobs for women. So she literally, like, she is the OG, talk shit on Yelp, let me get the invite. You know what I'm saying? She said what needed to be said, and she took a risk. Actually, she didn't really take a risk, because what was the fucking worst thing they were going to do? <coughs> Sorry, that was weird. <coughs> me lying and saying it's me. That's what I mean. Like, if I was reading this newspaper and saw this advertisement, I'd be like, I agree with her, so why not? Obsessed with you calling this getting employed era? Because that's what it is. Literally my biggest hero I didn't even know existed. Nellie Bly was a queen. How are we still having the same conversation now? We, history is just everyone having the same conversation again and again and again. The audacity of men to use women's bodies to be birthed and turn around and treat them like BS. Damn, if they did, that, that would now be used to get your identity and sue. No, literally. Now, like, if you wrote a negative piece and then they asked for your name like they would send you cease and desist papers lonely orphan girl would go crazy <laughs> to use her name that might be chat of the night it might be i don't know for sure just might be um lonely orphan girl 2003 elizabeth reading that women are only good for birthing and writing in as lonely orphan girl i miss jenna i miss jenna marbles i understand why she went off the internet i get it I get it, but I miss her. I loved her videos. She was so pure. You know what I mean? Um, do, do, do. Okay, moving on past the meme. Where is this when I miss Jenna? Moment of silence. For Actually, yes. Let's take a moment of silence for Jenna Marbles. I hope she's doing great. I, I heard now she like goes to dog rescue conventions, which is incredible. I love that for her. I'm glad she left the internet in the way I'm glad you left teaching. <laughs> uh, we love Jenna. I love when people use my custom emotes too. She's engaged or married to Julian, I think. I know they got engaged. But I don't know if they got married yet. And Jenna, we trust. Jenna Marbles raised me. Jenna Marbles raised me from childhood. Just join. What's the subject of today's convo? Women's fridge. We're talking about Nellie Bly's mental hospital investigation. Um, but yeah, Jenna Marbles, moment of silence. Okay, so, what the fuck? Why did my slides get so out of order? Why does this keep happening? So, literally, what the fuck? Okay, I know why this happened to me. It's making me angry. I've been having technology curses lately. But anyway, so she gets hired for the dispatch. She's like doing her thing, whatever. And then in 1866 to 18. 1887 or 1886 to 1887 she traveled through Mexico sending back reports on official corruption and the conditions of the poor um her sharply criticized her sharply ugh, I can't talk what the fuck is wrong with me her sharply critical articles angered Mexican officials and caused her expulsion from the country and these articles were called the six months in Mexico um <laughs> Do you see how, like, those two random slides got put in the wrong spot? That is so weird. But anyway, back to Nellie Bly. I'm gonna return to the Mexico thing. <sighs> Hate when this happens. Are you from New York? No. 
New York's gorgeous though. But anyway, her second article for the Pittsburgh Dispatch was called Mad Marriages, and it was about how divorce affected women. In it, she argued for reform of divorce laws. Mad Marriages was published under Nellie Bly rather than Lonely Orphan Girl. Um, and the editor chose Nellie Bly after the African-American title in that song, like I mentioned earlier. Cochran originally tried to write her pseudonym Nellie with a Y, um, but her editor wrote Nellie IE by mistake and the error stuck. So that is how she got her pseudonym of Nellie Bly was from this song from an African-American man named Stephen Foster. Um, and then I did look up <laughs> Nellie Bly racist to see what I could find just because that's something you should always Google. You know what I mean? She's white. She is a white woman. So Nellie Bly's racist vibe. It's worth noting that her own pseudonym was appropriated from um, a black artist's song and then she never really like gave credit or talked about that black artist. Um, with, and apparently the song is about a black woman like serving, a black serving woman. So it's like she picked this character name but then didn't even explain it. Um, and it's also worth noting that, that it was not her that picked it. It was actually her editor but she didn't say anything either. This guy, David Blixt, wrote this article. It was about some of her novels and about her pseudonym, where basically the way that he summed it up is that for Bly, when it comes to race, she was not more racist than her contemporaries, neither was she less racist. So there's a couple instances of like things being in her books and her pseudonym that like she didn't do anything awful, but she could have done something a lot better. You get what I'm saying? So that's what I kind of found when I was like investigating her racist vibes. We'll talk a little bit of more about that later, but back to Nellie Bly's career. And I'm still, she was complacent. Exactly. That's the word I'm looking for. Also, I'm still really mad that those two slides like got fucked up and like showed up way too early. She's on the racism spectrum. Exactly. Exactly. She is. So an onlooker. Okay. So back to her career timeline. After her second article, Mad Marriages, George Madden was like, damn bitch, I really like you. So I'm going to give you a full-time job. Um, and then as a writer, she focused her work on the lives of working women. Like I mentioned, she wrote a series of investigative articles on women factory workers. This is the part that gets a little crazy to me. She's writing these stories, like we mentioned, of like people living in slums, the factory workers, women's working conditions. And then the newspaper started receiving complaints from the factory owners about her writing. So then the newspaper was like, damn, we can't have these hoes mad at us. So they reassigned her to writing about fashion, society, and gardening. She said the quiet part out loud, and then they literally just reassigned her which is so rude and so annoying. Like, you can't just do that. Um, she became very dissatisfied with this. So she was only 21. She was still determined to do something no girl had done before. So she was very upset. She was, like, not feeling the vibes that they reassigned her to this, not the cease and desist. But yeah, so... Do, 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 do. Nellie getting assigned to cover fashion and society and gardening. Did she even know how to garden? I feel like that's the million dollar question no one's fucking asking. Did she know how to garden? We have not gotten to her being institutionalized yet. This is more of a slow burn. I want to talk about her whole life. Um, so then this was her next thing. Like I said, she did a six month in Mexico era. Not really sure how she convinced the editor to let her do this. Not really sure who was paying for this. Really unclear as to how that happened. Tried to Google it. Could not find a ton. Um, Google's Nellie Bly gardening. What were they expecting from a girl that they hired because she wrote a hate piece? <laughs> That's so true. That's like when any job hires me and then gets mad and fuck shit about working online. Like, what did you think was going to happen? Um, extra credit assignment. Did Nellie Bly know how to garden? Not her doing more by age 21 than I have at 23. White women invent agriculture and they stick it with us forever. OMG spoilers, institutionalized. <laughs> it's not what you think. Company hires a girl that exposes shit. <laughs> also company. No, not like that. <laughs> Ain't that the fucking truth? That's a 
another good um, contender for chat of the night. For those of you that are new here, I pick one Twitch chat and put it in the thumbnail sometimes. Sometimes, depending on the pictures I use in the thumbnail, I don't have space for it, but usually I try and pick a really funny chat from the night and include it in the thumbnail. Um, but anyway, back to Nellie Bly's six months in Mexico era. She traveled to Mexico to serve as a foreign correspondent, spending nearly six months there reporting the lives and customs of Mexican people. Her dispatch later, uh, her dispatches were later published in book form as six months in Mexico. In one report, she protested imprisonment of a local journalist who was criticizing the Mexican government, um, and then a dictatorship under Por Porifio Diaz, I think. Porifio? I don't know. Um, she got institutionalized at age 21. I did that years ago. <laughs> no. No. Um, but anyway, when Mexican authorities learned of Bly's report, they threatened her with arrest, which prompted her to flee the country. So that's why she was there for six months, because she was about to get arrested. Um, safely home, she accused Diaz of being a tyrannical czar, suppressing the Mexican people and controlling the press. Bly returned to the United States after her reporting put her in danger of imprisonment herself. Um, me going back in time and giving her Twitter... She would be unstoppable on Twitter. But anyway, side note about her six months in Mexico era. I found this excerpt from her book. I haven't read her whole book. I've read excerpts of it, though, of both of them that we're talking about. But she described the habits of soldiers, including marijuana use. So this is about the Mexican soldiers. This is what she wrote. She said, the soldiers have an herb named marijuana. They roll into small cigarros and smoke. It produces intoxication, which lasts for five days. And for that period, they are in paradise. It has no ill after effects, yet it is forbidden by law. It is commonly used among prisoners. One cigarro is made and the prisoners all sit in a ring and partake of it. The smoker takes the draw and blows the smoke into the mouth of the nearest man. Likewise, gives it to another and so on around the circle. One cigar will intoxicate the whole length of five days um, like five days I knew y'all were gonna have the exact same reaction to me which was, I'm sorry what five days not the mama bird eating smoke that's like a little erotic if you ask me for five male prisoners to be doing in a circle <laughs> five days is the funniest thing <laughs> they were zooted in the 1800s what was she smoking because it wasn't weed i don't think she was partaking i don't think she was down like that let me get a puff of that olden day sauce ha -ha. <laughs> 1800s sauce it's called shotgunning. It was the woman opiate. <laughs> they release it with opiate. <laughs> I can confirm I did not take the marijuana. <laughs> There's the gardening experience. <laughs> that was her gardening experience. They were like, that you're literally perfect for the job. On the real though, they might have been laced with strings. <laughs> Is it gay to blow smoke in your homies now? <laughs> I'm gonna ask my boyfriend if him and the homies ever do that. I'll be like, do you guys ever do this? <laughs> Miss Nelly absolutely plastered in Mexico. <sighs> Am I the asshole for blowing smoke into my homie's mouth and getting him high for five days in a Mexican print in 1887? <laughs> She put that in her resume. <laughs> why are they? Why were they not just puff, puff passing? Why'd they have to include mouth to mouth to make it last for the five days? Obviously, <laughs> dream blood rotation is Nelly Bly. The Mexican <laughs> government wasn't after her. She was just paranoid AF. <laughs> so does the gay shit make it more potent? I knew when I found this excerpt from her book about the five days of marijuana, I knew I had to include it. And I was like, this will murder any chance I have of being able to be like a credible public person, but I don't care because I knew this was going to be as funny as it is. 
Oh my god. This is about to be a top five stream just because of this topic alone. I'm hollering right now. Give Nelly Bly and crack by. <laughs> Nelly Bly in Colorado. Story time. I was in Mexico for five days. Not clickbait. This is actually a Tana Mo show story time. Okay. Things that would send Nelly Bly into a coma in 1800. Not shit. Oh my god. When she took a hit and went, oh dear heavens. Okay. This is hilarious. She really only went undercover to get the asylum drugs. Lonely Orphan Girl 12 subscribed with Prime. Please stop. I physically can't breathe. My chest hurts so bad. Because this is so funny. Bitch needs her fainting cow. People in the 1800s literally got heroin for a cold. But sure, Nelly, they got high for five days off one ago. POV, this is your first stream and you just got here and y'all are losing your minds. The chat is going so hard I can't handle it. Who was high longer? The gay Mexicans or the regular women who their husbands disliked. The hilarious part is that every time the chat is like this, like so looking funny, like I'm dying, I can't breathe, the better the chat gets, the viewership goes down because I think either you're in it or you're not. Like if you're not in the moment with us, it's not funny or entertaining at all. You gotta call your audience Lonely Orphan Girl. <laughs> okay. I've been looking for a name for y'all. It's gonna be my Lonely Orphan Girl. <laughs> oh my god, the first time chat. That might be the stream of the night with the crying cow emoji. Okay. Me joining the live stream right now. New merch idea. I'm the incarnation of Nelly Fly and I can't guard it. <laughs> I'll have what Nelly's having. Okay. So, oh my God. Let's get back into it for the people that actually came here to learn something. Um, Nancy Reagan is shaking right now. Stop it. Stop it, you guys. <laughs> We're fucking think. Okay, so in 1887, after her stint with the Mexican marijuana cigarros, she left Pittsburgh for New York City and went to work for Joseph Pulitzer's in New York World. One of her first undertakings for that paper was to get herself committed to the asylum on Blackwell Island by feigning insanity. So I've already learned so much tonight. Good, that's what we're here to do. So... This is where we actually get to her going, smoking a blunt right now, thinking about Nellie. One of her first. <laughs> Imagine you get to your first day of work and they're like, all right, here's your key card. Here's your laptop. First thing we want you to do, we want you to get committed to a mental hospital. Bear with me. Bear with me. Bear with me. Bear with me. Like the stream would have sent her into a coma. She would watch this stream and be like wow I fought so hard for women's rights for you to do this with them she'd be like this is what you're doing with all of your rights and opportunity and I'd be like yes while, while she's detoxing me stabbing someone in the street in 1887 to get into an asylum that was a requirement for my old job okay but anyway let's talk about her getting to the asylum um she was down like i respect a real recognize real and she was like let's fucking do it then she was committed to the bit exactly she was highly committed to the bit so this was the plan bly's editor suggested that she have herself committed for 10 days to expose the real conditions and bly was like fuck yeah i'm in so working under her name nelly bly she took a room in this boarding house it was called Temporary Homes for Females. Um, damn it. My live got taken down again. That's super lame. Hopefully people came here. 
Hmm. It said it was for hateful behavior. That's super lame. I hate when stuff like that happens. <sighs> lame. Okay. Which man with a podcast came up with that name? Nellie Bly, the name? Oh, no. The Temporary Homes for Females. Twas the Weed. Oh, you're right. That's what I mean. Like, I didn't say that. People did come here. Good. Glad people are here. But anyway, let's get back into it. Now that the internet has decided I'm too much. I'm just too much for that app. That's why I do it. People are like, oh, you should just do it on TikTok. This is why. This is why. TikTok is hating on the five days. Chat was cyberbullying. Bly. No. Temporary homes for females. Like, y'all couldn't have been a little bit creative. I want to know, like, maybe we bring this back. Like, what were the conditions like there? Because the housing crisis is kicking my ass right now and temporary homes for females not the worst idea I've ever heard um okay so anyway it was not hard at all for, for her to convince people that she was insane all she did was stay up all night to give herself a wide-eyed look of a disturbed woman which like mood um and then she began making accusations that the other boarders were insane Bly told the assistant matron there are so many crazy people about and one can never tell what they will do. So she, oh, this is in the game. At the end, I do like a little trivia game and this is a question in it. It's giving Trisha Paytas vibes. One thing I will say, Trisha Paytas is a mess, but I do respect Trisha Paytas for the fact that she vlogs everything just to pay for her weird music video hobby thing. Like, she knows what she wants. Wide-eyed and disturbed is me every day, me every morning of my life. Um, she she refused to go to bed and eventually scared so many of the other boarders that the police were called to take her to a nearby courthouse. Apparently, she also wandered the streets just like being weird. So it really only took like a day of her being weird to commit her to a mental hospital, which is kind of crazy to think about. Oh, drink your water now? Yeah, I probably should. I feel like it's a fine line between getting institutionalized to getting witch child that she's walking. You could wander the streets. You could always wander the streets. No, I agree. Tr Trisha is so self-perpetrating. It's scary. Not her committing to the acting crazy so hard only a day, right? Like, it's really, it's disturbing how quickly that's happened. Now I feel her. The boarding house staff, like, they were not trying to deal with this. The boarding house staff was not trying to deal with her. They were like, yeah, we're just going to call the police because you're being fucking weird. Um, so within days, like I said, the boarding house owners summoned the police. Bly now claimed to be Cuban immigrant suffering from amnesia and the judge was really confused so they sent Bly to Bellevue Hospital where Bellevue Hospital was really fucking bad and that's where they diagnosed her with dementia and other psychological illnesses and then she was sent by ferry to Blackwell Island which is where the mental hospital was so she was at two places and they were both really bad um, at the hospital hospital inmates were forced to eat spoiled food and live in squalid conditions um, Miss Bly committed to the bit. I wonder how many men did crazy shit like that and never committed. No, literally. Oh, fuck. Not the islands. Why Cuban? So she decided to be like, let's see what racism can do for me. Um, and it's because a lot of women were getting sent to mental institutions because they didn't speak English. So if they were lost and the police picked them up, they would be not speaking English and then they would just send them to mental hospitals. So she kind of wanted to see if that would like she knew that that was a reason why people went. So that's why she said that um, she was a Cuban immigrant. Why did the TikTok live end? Because TikTok said I was having hateful behavior. So did you get kicked off TikTok live? Yes, I did. I see we all just found our way here. Yeah. TikTok Live is honest a hater when it comes to anything. Um, that's like why I always feel bad when people are like, oh, I don't want to go to like a new platform, whatever. But TikTok is just a hater sometimes. No, she is not Cuban. She just said she was Cuban and the judge was like, okay, um, I moved over. Welcome, welcome. This keeps getting more fucked up. I told you guys this is going to be a fucked up episode. Nellie Bly pretending to be Cuban to get sent to the mental hospital which is kind of crazy she's just like oh I'll pretend to be Cuban and then they'll think I'm mentally ill which it's like fucked up that she did it and it's also fucked up that it worked you know what I mean side note you are so mother thank you is that a compliment I don't think I know what people mean when they say that pasta lord thank you for subscribing to prime do, 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 do. not the meme ah uh, yes a foreigner to the asylum exactly I think if they knew that she was like a well-to-do white woman, they would have been like, 
where's your husband? Where's your dad? Where's a family member? You know? And she wanted to kind of see what these vulnerable women were going through. Diagnosed a Cuban. Yes, it's a compliment. That's what I, I thought. So was it? D- yes. Yes, it's gay. That's what I thought. It means like I'm doing great. Like people say that about Joe Fox. So that's how I knew it was a compliment. It's giving Hilaria Baldwin. Yes, exactly. I used to live near an ice cream place called Nellie's Bly. That's all I can think of. Just ask her about gardening and then she'll need to be committed. Oh my God. Maybe they obviously knew she wasn't Cuban and they were like, um. <laughs> so was it difficult to trick the doctors? Not at all. After she was arrested, she went into the meetings really scared because she she thought these men could not be deceived after so much experience with the insane, but then she found next to no trouble convincing them that she was incurable. The fear of the insane was instilled in nearly every person, which meant to act to amplify her situation. Like they were going into it thinking, oh, sh- this, she's crazy. Like no one went into it with like a neutral mindset to actually like not, not have a bias and get to know what was going on. Um... But she, like, saw how badly they treated these people and how it made them just assume the worst in her situation. So first they take Bly to Bellevue Hospital, like I said, for further examinations. These proved to be nothing more than some questions a doctor asked her, questions which seemed to mean nothing as the doctor and nurses are already treating her like a lost cause because, like, they basically didn't ask her much at all. So then she gets sent to the mental hospital. It was originally built to hold 1000 patients, but Blackwell crammed more than 1600 people into the asylum when she arrived in 1887. Um, she was terminally incurably Cuban men. When a woman speaks suspicious TBH, what in pop culture was making people so afraid of the insane? That's a good question. I don't really know. I think it was also a combination of like the way they were treating mental illness made people worse. Um, okay, so also extensive budget cuts had led to a sharp decline in patient care. So there were only 16 doctors on staff. That is 16 doctors for every 100 people, if I did my math correctly, which I probably did not. Ableism mostly, I think, yeah. Um, so there were not proper care. You just cannot have proper care with that ratio of people. It's just impossible. Um, this is what it looks like. Like, this is a super old photo, as you can tell. Quite the large building. Didn't syphilis make people insane? Maybe that's why they were scared. Like someone else said, I think it was a combination of like, um, fuck, I lost the message, but someone, oh, here it is. Ableism plus moral panics plus all other bullshit in American history. I think that's the best description of it. It's just a combination. Vibes were fucked from that pic alone. No, literally. I need to see a timeline of history that includes when things were invented. Let me look up. I saw someone asking about ice. Let me look up when air conditioning was invented. Because by this point, they had factories and they had mass um, production. When was air conditioning invented? Air conditioning was not invented yet. Air conditioning was invented in 1902. So I think they did have some types of electricity, but not air conditioning. But not everything was powered by electricity. Lots of things were still manual. People sent their families, kids too, to institutions because of economic hard times, like they couldn't afford them. Yeah, that's true. It's the unknown. No one is actually trying to understand mental illness. Yeah, I actually toured a mental hospital that's in like middle Georgia that used to be huge and have tons of people there. And that's where I kind of started learning about like how that system was back then. Um, I don't know, all the boomers who have lead poisoning, who knows what the people inhaled slash consumed that damaged their brains in 1890. Exactly. Also, a lot of if, um, like people didn't really the doctors didn't know as much about like pregnancy and about like that you shouldn't do while that while you're pregnant so that led to a lot of other like people being born with issues that would land them in mental institutions because a lot of times mental institutions at this time like it wasn't just mentally ill people it was also people that had disabilities they were perceiving as mental illness but they were just disabilities which is a different thing that's treated differently um it was that five day weed, all that weed smoke from me, man. Y'all are good. keep coming back to that. Growing up, my family threatened to send me to that hospital if I didn't stop misbehaving. Central state. Yeah, I, I think that was a very common threat people faced. I don't know how old you are. I'd be curious. Um, Nellie Bly coming into a mental hospital with other, over 1,500 patients. 
disinfectant and 16 doctors. Not to mention doctors literally never washed their hands. They used to institutionalize LGBTQ plus people too. Yeah, when were lobotomies invented? But this was lobotomy times. Yeah, let me look up when lobo they started doing lobotomies, but this was definitely lobotomy times, I think. Watch me be wrong. My hair is really like getting stuck in my rings. When were lobotomies popular? I think this is like the beginning of the lobotomy era. Oh, the frontal lobotomy was developed in the 1930s. Yeah, so this was a little bit before lobotomy era. Live, laugh, lobotomy. My college had a real lobotomy chair. Lobotomy time sounds like my kind of party. So this was like, these people did lobotomies later. Like it was the same kind of facilities, but I don't think when Nellie Bly was there, it was lobotomy times yet. I would have been lobotomized. This was pre-lobotomy. Yes, it is pre-lobotomy. Um, oh, you're late. You got the time different wrong. It's okay. We're just starting to talk about the mental hospital stuff. I want liposuction and a lobotomy. You guys, we don't want lobotomies. I think it's a funny joke and I used to make that joke, but then I sometimes think about The Handmaid's Tale and I'm like, I don't want that, like me tweeting about that to be used against me later. You know what I mean? <laughs> Just the thought kind of frightens me a little bit. Um, treatment was really fucking bad there. My fucking hair has so many knots in it. Most disturbing of all was the prevailing wisdom of the age regarding both the um, causes of mental illness and the how patients should be treated. Doctors and staff had little training and in many cases, little compassion. They ordered harsh brutal treatments that did little to heal and much to harm. Once there, she stopped acting insane and simply acted at herself. So once she got there, she was like, I'm actually going to drop this whole insane person energy and just act normal and see how that goes for me. Um, somehow in this world of twisted logic, she says the more sanely she talked and acted, the crazier she was thought to be. So she was like, the more that I like am myself and normal, the crazier they think I am and the worse they treat me. Oh, lonely. Walter Freeman popular ice pick lobotomy in 1946 and toured the countries performing up to 25 in a day with no anesthesia. Mm, immediately. No, immediately. No, no. She said, Hey girlies, I'm not Cuban. Actually, I'm not an orphan. <laughs> That's like where my dad never believed me when I told the truth, but believed every lie. LOL. <laughs> Being a normal woman plus insane if we're being real about how society acts. Yeah, exactly. If we're fucking real. Um, side note about mental illness and women in asylums during this time. Um, in the mid to late 1800s, insane asylums served as a catch-all facility for violent and difficult women. But were they actually violent and difficult? Or were they just not fitting into the social constraints of the time? And then I also wanted to make a note to say that I toured a former mental hospital in rural Georgia. And they told me that men could admit their wives with just a doctor's note. So like if they knew the doctor in their town, they could be like, hey, I want to fuck my mistress over the weekend. So could you put my wife in the mental hospital? And the doctor would be like, yeah, brother, we went to University of Alabama together. So I'd love to do that for you. And then like women were just getting institutionalized for like literally nothing when they didn't need to be. Um, and it, I could also be described as violent and difficult. So yeah, it was like a lot of the people like for one, anyone dealing with mental health issues and mental illness should be treated with respect and dignity and all these things in a facility. But two, the people there should actually need to be there. Like that feels really, really basic. So messed up, but not surprised. To be honest, it's still not great. Like today's mental hospitals still suck. Yes, unless you're rich, mental hospitals are terrible. Awful, 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 awful. Okay, so according to Carol Smith Rosenberg, author and expert of women's history in the United States, psychiatrists in the Victorian era or alienist, as they were often called, specifically used medicine to police women's behavior. They all have very definite ideas about what, how women ought to behave. She says there were general feelings of what caused abnormal behavior and usually this refusal of traditional gender roles. Um, I almost went to the same one as Sylvia Plath. So that's cool. If you're going to go to a mental hospital, do it right. That's what I always say. Um, but yeah, anyway, that's kind of just like, just so you could kind of understand the context of the time period 
greater mental asylums and women and all that. They also used it to perpetrate white supremacy. Yes, I thought about getting into the race aspect of it here, but it was just such a huge can of worms that I was like, that deserves its own stream and shouldn't be like a sidecar topic or a side note. Because I do want to kind of talk about that later. Um, happy you're here, Miss SOS Sauce. Is that what your name is? I don't know. Let me guess, she was hysterical. Troubled wife industry. Me finding out that men used to send their wives to mental hospitals for having normal human emotions. Shocker. Shocker, shocker, shocker. Um, women, I feel really upset and angry when you cheat on me and hit me, their husband. You're going to the hospital. You are going to the hospital. Something's wrong with you. Why do you act like that? I didn't do anything wrong. All I did was punch you in the face and fuck our neighbor. So I think you need to relax because that was super normal. Um, to, to do, sorry, that was, there's lots of long messages that I can't read right now because I'm blind. Um, Bly quickly befriended fellow inmates who also revealed the rampant psychological and physical abuse. So a lot of what she learned is from other people who had been there for a very long time because women would be here for years. Bly was only here for 10 days. A lot of the women that she was here with were there for years, for so long. So I have a couple examples of patient stories that she wrote about. And Nelville explains that she had been a poor chambermaid. A chambermaid is, I think, where you like live in a building and take care of the rich people. I don't really know. Um, but then she had gotten sick. So she went to a sister's home, I think that's like a nun's home, to be treated, and her nephew was paying for it. But then her nephew lost his job and couldn't pay the sister home, so she got transferred to a fucking insane asylum. Like, literally, she was just a working-class woman with a job, got sick, couldn't perform her job, couldn't afford medical care for herself. The sane asylum? That's not adding up to me. She knows she's not insane and says, the doctors have been asking me many asking me may curious questions and confusing me as much as possible, but I have nothing wrong with my brain. So doctors would ask them like contradicting things and kind of like just not do a proper psychological assessment. Um, nearly all the women blind meets are not wealthy or are from immigrant families. And we can understand how their life in New York had left them with so few options outside of the asylum. Ah, uh, yes. OG American capitalism. The bar was low, but damn, the bar is literally on the floor. Um, so by, like I said, she quickly revealed, or the people quickly revealed how bad it was. Other examples were patients were forced to take ice cold baths and remain in wet clothes for hours, which led to frequent illnesses. They were forced to sit still on benches without speaking or moving for stints lasting 12 hours or more. Like what, for what reason? What's the win here? Like, what are you accomplishing? Wishing all those institutionalized wives treatment for hysteria. To do. Sorry, I can't read. I'm so blind. But anyway, what is anyone gaining by them sitting there for 12 hours on a fucking bench? Um, some patients were tethered together with ropes and forced to pull carts around like mules. Like what? Who? Whose idea was this? You could just sit there and do nothing. Alyssa and the Hill. Thank you. I I'd be fucked. My ADHD could never. Trying to make them actually insane. That's what I mean. Like, that would drive me insane, not cure me of insanity. Exactly. Me in 1800, the <laughs> doctor thinking torture will cure the mentally ill. Healing. This is giving me the same vibes as, like, those teen wilderness programs that, like, Paris Hilton went to. At this point, real treatment would be easier. P punishing them into submission and silence. No, literally, it was, this was like a full-on war zone here. Food and sanitary conditions were horrific with rotten meat, bloody and s moldy, not bloody, moldy stale bread and contaminated water dished out. The reason I was thinking the word bloody is because I'm thinking, what happens when you're on your period here? It can't be good. It cannot be good. Me sitting for 12 hours, my fucking photo. Um, do, do, do. those who complained or resisted were beaten and Bly even spoke of threat of sexual violence by vicious, tyrannical staffers. Um, I think they're malnourished so they don't get it. Oh, I bet that makes sense. That does make sense. I bet that's true is what I mean. Not me, not knowing the story of Sylvia Plath and then being shook after Googling it. Why do they think they can beat the ills out? Like it's proven time and time again, free bleeding, but it's not feminist. It's unhygienic. Free bleeding is something that is never a hill I want to climb. Um, but yeah, so absolutely terrible, terrible treatment in the mental institutions. Um, 
Nelly Bly is seeing all of this and she's like, bitch, what the fuck? This is crazy. Like, this is crazy that people are living like this and people are getting treated like this. It's really, really not okay. Um, yeah, a lot of people's bodies were probably in such shades of distress that they didn't want. That makes sense. Low burn 17. Thank you for subscribing with Prime. Love to hear it. Love to see it. Thank you very much for supporting my endeavors. Um, and Bly was shocked to discover that many of the inmates were not insane at all. Um, they were recent immigrants, mostly women that were caught up in a law enforcement system where they were unable to communicate. So like I said, lots of people were sent there just because they didn't speak English. Others that Bly met at Blackwell and Bellevue Hospital before had fallen through the cracks of society. And keep in mind, like today, we don't have enough safety nets for people. But back then it was even worse. Um, so they, they ended up there simply for being poor with little to no family support around them. To her horror, Bly realized many of these inmates were not suffering from mental illness before they arrived to the asylum, but their treatments inflicted grave psychological damage on them. So honestly, I think like, who's paying for all of this? I think it's the government, but I feel like this is what where my head is at. I think this is all government funded back then. But I feel like today what would happen is that mental hospitals would be getting money from the government and have to keep their patient numbers high so they would like torture people to make them go insane to stay there. Like that really feels like something that would come out. They're all state hospitals, yeah. But like now, usually the way it works is the state doesn't own the hospital. The government like pays the hospital. So I feel like this could happen. I think we got to keep an eye on this is all I'm saying. Talk about a waste of government funds. Exactly. Like our government barely paid for anything back then and you were paying for women to get tortured. Like let's tone it down several notches, please. They do that now with prisons, so wouldn't be surprised. Exactly. That's like, we got, this is how we got to think. We got to, you got to think evil to beat evil because you got to be one step ahead. Um, so yeah, lots of these women had terrible psychological damage from being here, which is very understandable. Um, Nellie realizing that not only are these people being mistreated, but they are also not insane. Like that just makes it even worse. Like obviously people deserve to be treated, but like treated well, no matter what's going on with them. Hospitals are the best at gaslighting. Exactly. Like, like the fact that the people don't want to be there were brought there against their will and have no basis for being there and no valid medical reason for being there. I would imagine some of them probably end up being insane from being there. NYC is bringing this back. The NYPD can now put you in a mental hospital for no other reason other than they think you need to be there. Let me watch myself. You know what I mean? Let me keep an eye on myself. Is something that I think needs to happen. Crystal West GIF. OMG, love her. I actually don't know who this is, so I'm glad that you love them. Maybe I will look them up. Um... Other specific quotes from her book, women are given barely edible food, slightly spoiled and cold meat, thin and flavorless broth and tea and the bread was black, dirty and hard in places, nothing more than dried dough. <clears throat> and Bly found a spider in her bread. She couldn't make herself eat, but the other residents are hungry enough that they nearly leap over each other to reach as much food as they can and eat it quickly without complaint. So yes, people are very, very, very malnourished. Um, Bly is given an ice cold bath and scrubbed ferociously all over by a nurse. And apparently they would scrub them so hard that like their skin would break. And they had like the, those bristle brushes that were like really, really scratchy. Um, also your skin would probably be dry as shit in here. It's giving Stanford prison experiments. No, it literally is. Um, her, where was I? She is rinsed with more cold water and then put in a flannel dress without being dried off. So her wet hair and skin make her bed sheets and pillow wet and cold. And the single wool blanket she's provided is too short to cover her feet and shoulders at the same time. Damn. It's almost like they should have the big blanket that I posted an ad for today. <laughs> That's terrible. They don't even get a fucking blanket and they're in the bed all wet and cold. Cringing at the feeling of busted skin rubbing against flannel. Exactly. Like your scratched up cold, wet skin against flannel. Not blanket plug. <laughs> not the ad placement. I couldn't not. Like I didn't, I did not include that intentionally. I made this before I made the ad, just to be clear. Those women's poor hair was being sold and look up the force feeding if you really want to see what would happen if a woman tried to hunger strike or just unable to eat? Yes, if you look at, there's this movie called Ironclad Angels about the suffragettes going to prison to fighting for white women's right to vote. 
Um, and it talks about that and shows that and it's really horrifying and they would like force feed raw eggs down their throats if they were trying to hunger strike. I bet their skin was so bad acne wise. Yeah. I feel like their skin probably was bad like eczema wise too. They showed us ironclad angels in eighth grade. That's kind of a lot. Um, also more specific instances from her stay. In two separate instances, when she asked why there are not more blankets or clothes or why people aren't treated better. <coughs> <coughs> also, that is so me. <coughs> that came out of nowhere. But that is so me to be like ignorant and spoiled and be like, this should be better. What's going on? Like, <laughs> That's hilarious. That is actually hilarious. Um, but anyway, where was I? Oh my God. I have so many frame drops. Sorry about that. That's not good. Um, in two separate instances, when she asked those questions, she was told, this is charity. You should be thankful for what you get and you shouldn't complain. And a nurse told her need that she doesn't need to expect any kindness here for you. You won't get it. That is so rude. Imagine getting to the hospital and being the fucking nurse being like, it's going to fucking suck, bitch. And you're going to have to deal with it. And no one's going to be nice to you. And you can get wrecked. And that's all I'm going to say. Um, the next morning, the patients and their still damp hair were brutally combed as 45 women share two nurses and six combs. They don't even get to comb their own hair. Like, God damn it. I just accidentally fucked that up. I can get it back, though. I hate when I accidentally do that. I hate when it happens during work. Damn it. It went back to one. Oh, no, it didn't. Okay, there it goes. <clears throat> but anyway, taking care of yourself in, like, the physical manner does a lot for your mental health and does a lot for, like, you feeling productive. So, like, usually in environments like this, it's supposed to be set up for a patient to be as independent as they possibly can to, like, feel agency. So the fact that people that are perfectly capable of combing their own hair are getting in this like lineup to comb hair is like really just degrading. Um, after a thin breakfast, the patients are sent to do all cleaning and upkeep of the institution, even cleaning the nurses' bedrooms and clothing. Cleaning the nurses' bedrooms and clothing? I'm sorry. What is this? Um, for several hours of the day, patients, like I said, are made to sit still on benches. Um, as apparently thinking up actual therapeutic or enjoyable activities is too challenging for the doctor. The nurses said free servants so they can clean but not brush their own hair. Exactly. Like, it's so psychologically damaging to be here. They really said anything that could possibly help someone get better. Fuck that. The little bugs. Oh, the bug, the bed bugs and the lice here were probably gnarly. So here's an excerpt. I was never so tired as I grew sitting on those benches. Several of the patients would sit on one foot or sideways to make a change, but they were always reproved and told to sit up straight. If they talked, they were scolded and told to shut up. If they wanted to walk around in order to take the stiffness out of them, they were told to sit down and be still. What accepting torture would produce insanity? Equal than this treatment. I would like to like the expert physicians who are condemning me for my action to sit to stay perfectly sane and healthy. Woman, shut her up, make her sit from 6 a.m. until 8 p.m. on straight back benches and do not allow her to talk or move during these hours. Give her no reading and let her know nothing of its world or its doings. Give her bad food and harsh treatment and see how long it will take to make her insane. Two months would make her a mental and physical wreck. Um, what happened to the cruel and unusual punishment amendment is, is, is the 1800s, you know, is our, there wasn't really like rules or regulations or enforcement of things even less than there is now. I think it's really easy to get like super depressed about the United States and the United States is worth getting depressed over, but it's so easy to be like, oh, we have nothing. We have no social services. Like all these people are being treated terribly, which is true, but it used to be like a lot crazier, like. It used to be crazy. We can want better, but it's good to think about. Gilded Age is so gross. We're in like a new Gilded Age right now. So that's why I think we're going to have another labor movement soon because history just goes in cycles. And this was the Gilded Age where like really unfettered capitalism was popping off. And then we had the labor movement and then things kind of got more regulated. So like U.S. history is just ebbs and flows between like regulation, deregulation, regulation, deregulation. And now we're in kind of a deregulation era, unfortunately. Um, they didn't consider the institutionalized 
people. The 1800s, journalism was going crazy and Nellie Bly and Upton Sinclair. Yeah, exactly. Um, and now, yeah, homeless people can get forcefully institutionalized in New York right now. Um, <clears throat> sorry, I don't know what's wrong with me today. Um, but yeah, so Nellie Bly writes about all of this in her book. And then on top of everything, the nurses were in their bad girls club era. The behavior of the nurses on watch come off as completely unprofessional and cruel in every way. When they aren't taunting the inmates or brutally abusing them, there are several stories that mentioned where a woman was choked or given a black eye or her hair was pulled out for no reason whatsoever by the nurses. They also flirt with the doctors, gossip about each other, and they swear and deride one another and the patients at every opportunity so this is like so batshit crazy on so many levels the doctors are fucking using people the nurses are insane oh the mean girl to the nurse pipeline isn't new at all just like Grey's Anatomy OMG I know right yes also someone mentioned essay there was so much sexual assault that happened in these institutions as well 1870s Regina George was nursing mainly male or female back then? It was mainly female. I think it was really only female back then. <clears throat> the nurses flirting with the doctors after giving the patients black eyes and pulling their hair. Like, what was going on here? Were all of the doctors and nurses, like, on something as well? Like, what was happening? The original plastic, bad girls club, lonely girls version. Oh my God. Okay, so... Nellie Bly was in there for 10 days and then her editor arranged for her release. Apparently her editor got some like letters from a lawyer and was like, yes, the nurses did live there, but her editor got some shit from a lawyer and was like, Hey, you got to let my girl go. Um, because she shouldn't actually be there. And then the hospital was like, Oh, you're a man. So we'll listen to you. She's like, you can come pull up and get her whenevs. Um, me linking with Dr. Jebediah after beating his wife in the asylum. No, literally. It would be like, oh, I can write the note for you to go in there and then I'll just rock her shit. Like, it's, oh God, it's so gross. Um, okay, so Nellie Bly to the women in the mental hospital after 10 days of misery when most of them had been there for years already. Like, that's what's crazy to me. If I was the other women, I'd be like, okay, bitch, you're just gonna leave us here? Like, you're literally just gonna leave me here? That's fine, I guess. Post lobotomy makeout slash vibes. No, literally, like these nurses and doctors were fucking rocking these women's shit and torturing them, and they're being like, "Let's fuck in the supply closet." It was like, if Love Island was a mental hospital, it would be this. If Love Island was an 1800s women's mental asylum, this is what we would be looking at. <clears throat> I'm thinking if the nurses live there as a case of proximity, attraction, lol which sucks, lol, they had asylum goggled. Dr. Jebediah said I was his favorite lonely orphan girl. <laughs> Dude, these chats are so fucking funny. The lonely orphan girl. Proximity attraction is such a silly concept. I can't go there right now. Thanks for bringing it up, but I physically, emotionally cannot go there right now. The women in the mental hospital when Nellie mysteriously got to leave. I feel like everyone there was probably like, so she just gets to go? Like, that was fucking quick because there can only be one lonely orphan girl. Oh, my God. But I feel like the women in the hospital were probably like, damn, homegirl Nellie got out of here quick. Who pulled up and picked her up? Um, so, investigation era. A month after Bly's articles were published, a grand jury panel visited the asylum to investigate, but unfortunately, the hospital and its staff had been tipped off in advance, and by the time the jury members arrived, the asylum had cleaned up its act literally. So, the part that's crazy to me is, like, this is what sucks about, like, capitalism and, like, systems is, like, Nellie Bly went out to do a good thing and she did a great thing. But I bet when they were getting ready for this visit, the women there, that was probably the worst days of their fucking life because they were probably getting tortured the fuck out of them being like, you're going to act right and you're not going to talk shit when we get this visit here and having to clean the entire place, like, fucking top to bottom everything. Like, I know this is not comparable at all but I remember when I would work in restaurants and the health inspector was coming the days before that were terrible because you're like cleaning so fucking much the owner's stressed out and yelling at you all the time and like so I feel like it was probably terrible when this investigation came through like the investigation that's supposed to help these people is probably hurting the people that are actually in it 
But <clears throat> many of the inmates who had provided Bly with details of the horrific treatment had mysteriously been released or transferred. Um, and the staff denied everything that Bly said. They were like, that's actually not true. Um, we don't know what you're talking about. And fresh food and water had been brought in and the asylum itself had been all the way scrubbed down. So they really, really cleaned it and brought in fresh food and water. And then they were like, um, everything's actually fine. We're doing great. I work at a hotel and we're hella deep cleaning before inspections. Exactly. It's terrible. It's just dark days. Um, the asylum's getting ready for their investigation. Side note, this is from my favorite video on the internet. And I hope that you have all seen this video. This is my number one favorite video that's ever happened. Nothing on the internet will ever top this because this is the funniest thing that's ever happened. One less lonely orphan girl. Stop. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> we can't let them know we sit. It's so funny. It's such a good fucking video. Um, they're one of my favorite creators. They're so funny. I need to watch more of their stuff with the Gale character because Gale is literally my mother. Like, a win is a win. Yeah, so I guess the women that did talk shit to Nelly died, then some of them got released. So that was kind of a slay for them, honestly. I bet the women that didn't talk shit were like, damn, I should have done that. Because they were, they like, they knew what was going on. Like, they had to have put two and two together. Once, like, like this lady was here for 10 days, then magically they get picked up and then later there's an investigation and all the people that talked to this lady magically got released beforehand they can put that together because again most of them were not mentally ill and most mentally ill people could put that together um you are the only reason i have twitch is there any other viable reason to be on twitch other than this i have no idea i don't watch anyone on twitch sorry the nurses are like huh this nelly reminds me of this lonely orphan girl getting high for five days Maybe they were released into the afterlife. That, that is another good point. Maybe they were. Damn. Everything got scrubbed and they got food and water. Yeah, they had to do the scrubbing though. So accountability era, despite the effort at cover up, the grand jury agreed with Bly. How bad do you have to fucking be that you got tipped off to the investigation, cleaned up, and then they still didn't think it was good enough and you still got in trouble? How bad does it have to be? Also, thanks for telling me to drink water. But this is the result. It increased funding for mental institutions. They added like $850,000, which would be close to $24 million in today's money. <clears throat> Abusive staff members were fired. This, to me, is one of the most important parts. Translators were hired to assist immigrant patients. Because, again, so many of these people just couldn't communicate what their situation was. Um, I had two glasses of water during the stream, but also two glasses of wine. That does count. That absolutely counts. But anyway, where was I? But yeah, they had many changes that were made to help the system, to change the system to help prevent those that did not actually suffer from mental illness becoming committed. Um, was this the Dorothea Dix era? I don't know. I don't think I know that. Um, so what did Nellie Bly do after this? World tour. She went on a world tour. This is her. I'm very proud of this meme. I will give you a moment to acknowledge the meme. Is that woman not speaking English to the asylum? Literally. Literally. It's a slay meme. Thank you. I appreciate that. So glad we could all be enjoying this moment together. Um, do, 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 do. She had to see how long the weed lasted everywhere. Okay, so then Nellie went into her around the world era. In 1888, she suggested to her editor at the New York world that she take a trip around the entire world attempting to turn the fictional around the world in 80 days into a fact so she was like that story I'm going to do it at IRL and then she actually did it in 72 days and she did a lot of PR um beforehand so that people would like be interested and buy it and shit like that and she went to lots and lots of places she went through England France Brazil I don't even know where that is the Suez Canal Colombia which I think would be Colombia to us, Singapore, Hong Kong, Japan. And it took her 72 days um, to get from Hoboken to back to New York after going around the entire world. So that is what she did following this. Also, just, just wait because a bunch of other crazy shit happens in her life and y'all are going to be shook. Shout out to the 313 people still here. 
Okay. So in 1895, she married a billionaire or a millionaire manufacturer, Robert Seaman. She was 31 and he was 73 when they got married. And due to her husband's failing health, she left Germany. And then when he died, she became the head of ironclad manufacturing. So she literally married this man on his deathbed and over his company. <laughs> and just, wait, Andrew Nicole Smith era, City Girl era. Get that back live, right? Isn't this crazy? Um, so yeah, she married him and then less than 10 years later took over his company. And for a time, she was one of the leading women industrialists in the United States because she took over this big company. But um, this article said her negligence and embezzlement by a factory manager resulted in the company going bankrupt. But I got some more information on it. Boss has a bitch alert. She knew what the fuck she was doing. Honestly, me slipping poison in Robert's drink. Um, Nellie Bly running ironclad manufacturing. She did make it go bankrupt. But it, at first, I was making fun of her for this. At first. Stop. damn how did you fumble the bag this hard that like you took over this company and then it almost immediately went bankrupt like you were one of the leading women industrialists and then she just it just fucking went bankrupt so i looked into why it went bankrupt and this is what i found out she ran her company as a model of social welfare and she had so many health benefits and recreational facilities for her employees that that's why it went bankrupt <clears throat> how did you take over this company and make it go bankrupt i don't know ask elon musk but yeah because she treated the employees so good that's why it went bankrupt because it's just like not a sustainable business model um where was i did to do she it says Bly was hopeless at understanding the financial aspects of her business and ultimately lost everything. Unscrupulous employees bilked the firm hundreds of thousands of dollars and troubles compounded by protracted and costly bankruptcy litigation. So like employees were taking advantage of her because she was so like, everyone should have benefits. Let's build this recreation center. And that's why the company went bankrupt, which is honestly, I can respect that. I just know Seaman was rolling in his grave. He was like, are you fucking kidding me? I built this whole company. You gave up your whole company to be married to a hot younger woman for 10 years on your deathbed. How many times y'all probably had sex? 12 max. That's all I'm going to say. So it was like, you gave up your whole company for that. Men are so dumb. I love men. I love men. I love my man so much. Love a total of like three men in the entire planet Earth. But I would do it too for a check <laughs> when being woke backfired. None of you have jobs anymore, but you still have the free gym. He had a heart attack mid-relation, sorry to say. Nellie doing for her employees what her parents didn't do for her. No, literally. Three men is plenty. I trust three men. Um, Post-failed girl boss era. So after she bankrupted that entire company, she was like, I'm just going to go back to journalism because I was way better at that. So then she covered the women's suffrage procession um, and her article's headlines are suffragettes are men's superiors. And then she accurately predicted that women in the United States would be given to the right to vote. She also wrote stories on, e on Europe's Eastern Front during World War I. She was also the first woman and one of the first foreigners to visit the war zone between Serbia and Austria. And she was arrested when she was mistaken for a British spy. But honestly, when she got arrested, she was probably just like, this is literally not even my first rodeo. So like, let me just show you my passport and we can all get fucking on with our day. <laughs> um, the Eastern Front is not talked about enough, probably. Not him actually doing a fart disease. Her saying, I'm Cuban, not British. She's like, oh... No, no hablas inglés. <laughs> okay, but Bly passed away when she was only 57 from pneumonia in New York, and she was buried at Woodland Cemetery in the Bronx in New York City. So I think it's crazy that she did so much in her life, and she died pretty young at 57. Like, she fucking ran, she was in a newspaper that she got that job from being a 
paid. Then she went to a ment- she went to Mexico for six months. Then she was in the mental institution. And then she made so much change there. And then she was around the world. And then she married this guy and Girl Boston took over his company. And then that kind of flopped. So she went back to journalism. And then she was in a war zone. Like she really did it all. That was an anticlimactic death. I know, right? It's like, that's how she went out. That's kind of sad to me. Finally catching alive again. Last class I made it to was the AX class, but we're catching up the rest on YouTube. Oh, I love when people catch up on YouTube. If I accomplish that much in 57 years, then 57 years is enough. Yeah, maybe she was like, I'm fucking tired and this is annoying, so goodbye. Um, but I have a little trivia game for us. I'm hoping the sound works. My mic situation is different, so we shall see. What game do we want to play? Maybe space? Oh no, we'll do happy holidays for Christmas. Merry Christmas. Um, here, let me show you how to join. If you click the link and open it in a new tab, you can join the game or you can just watch us. If you don't want to play the game, you can just watch and the questions will come up, but I wanted to tell you that it was an option. Yes, all of my classes are on YouTube. There's like 50, not 50, like 35 plus streams on there that are like all really long. Some are better than others, but everyone tell me what your favorite stream was. Anthrax Attacks is probably number one. That one was batshit crazy. I loved Anthrax Attacks. I'll give you guys a couple minutes to join the game. MK Ultra was a good one. Also, you don't have to download the Nearpod app. If you just go to the website in a browser, you can just do it in the browser. You don't have to make an account either. If you're on the app, it tries to fake you out and look like you have to make an account, but you don't have to. How do you join the game? It depends on what kind of device you're on. Like if you're on a computer, you can just open a new tab. But like if you have me on your TV, you can do it on your phone. Um, and just go to join.nearpod.com and then enter the code PZJMH if you want to play the game. So you can can do it in another tab on another device however you want it works just as well on a phone that it does on a computer and again you also don't have to play if you want to just watch us play that's totally fine anthrax anything where we should on reagan and k ultra titanic was a good one titanic was good oh my god i can't believe there's 40 people in the game it's crazy to me also i'm gonna be this is me being in my feelings so it's crazy to me that like tonight so many people want to spend their free free time watching me talk about this woman from history like that is so crazy to me and I'm so grateful that you guys all want to be here for that and the fact that 54 people are probably on two devices to play a game that I made like who the fuck am I for that who the fuck am I I'm nobody so thank you all it's like such a privilege and an honor I'll give you a couple more seconds to join the game let me send the thing again let me send the link. peace and love or you can click that link that I just put you're a legend. Thank you. Thank you. Oh my God, I can't believe there's 59 people on here now. And you get to pick your little character guy. I didn't have the energy to participate today, but I really needed to not be alone tonight. So thank you. Always love the company. Thank you. I love the company as well. I love your classes. It's a great Wednesday night. My husband and I just had her and listened. I love when you get sappy and never felt more seen. Because it's like, y'all could be watching anything. Y'all could be watching fucking Game of Thrones. Y'all could be watching Secession. Y'all could be watching old Jenna Marbles videos. Like, there's so much content on the internet. There's no shortage of random bullshit to watch. So the fact that that many people choose to watch me, it's like, I'm in my feelings. I'm in my feelings. I literally told my boyfriend we have to do our own things at home on Wednesdays because I have class. Frozen? Walmart parking lot student. Welcome back. I do be binging old Jenna. I need to watch Succession again. I'm watching Succession right now. I love all the interruptions in conversation. This is how I learn. I got to merits for talking in class. That's how I learned too. Like we have to be having fun. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and start the game. I'm hoping that you'll be able to hear the music. Really sorry if you cannot. Um, can you guys see the video still? I hope that you guys. Did you watch White Lotus? Not yet. I'm starting it with my boyfriend when I come back into town. Okay, I'm starting. I don't know if you can hear the music. I can hear the music. It's very loud. But that's because I have headphones in. Me holding off watching Real Housewives of Salt Lake City to be in the streams. Oh my god. Okay, what did we learn about today? Can, can you hear the music? 
Does anyone confirm or deny that? Season 2 of White Lotus is better than Season 1. Interesting. Yeah, I didn't think the music would work because I had the headphones on. It's not that great music, so it's fine, actually. What was Nellie Bly's real name? Yeah, I made it so I, it didn't play on you guys' computers, but that was kind of stupid of... No. If I had updated my computer, you'd be able to hear the music. So I'm going to update my computer. Okay. Sorry, technical difficulties. Let me try this. What about now? Now can you hear the music? Are you going to be on the upcoming episodes of Real Housewives Miami? I want to be on Real House Girlfriends of Miami. What's next week's topic? That's a great thing for us to discuss right now. I have no idea. Let me look at my list. Stream ideas. Why can't I find anything ever? Um, no, not that list. Why can't I find it? Did I accidentally delete it? Like, actually end my life if I accidentally deleted it. That would be incredible of me. Oh, there it is. I don't know why I couldn't find it. If you ever want to do another Vietnam War-esque stream, could you do one on how the CIA recruited among the hum to help in the war? Ooh, there's so much about the Vietnam War to talk about. It's truly, truly endless. Um, um, oh, someone that's only done Nearpod on the teacher side. Nellie Bly was 420 friendly. <laughs> no, she was talking shit on them. The list is just CIA's list of declassified things. Me waiting on the timer to tell me I'm wrong. Okay, so ideas. Um, I did a project on Agent Orange, and it was about shit insane. Agent Orange, Agent Orange is insane. Can you guys hear the music or no? Still no? Are we still unable to hear the music, I'm assuming? I've not done one on JFK. I don't want to get put on a list. Oh, well. We will lose some. No mic, no music. That's unfortunate. Next week, I'll have it play on student devices so you can hear the music. What did Nellie Bly do to get committed? <clears throat> what if his head just did that, though? That's my favorite theory. That's my favorite one. So ideas for next week. Section 504 sit-in is one. Also, the banana horse is one. I was also thinking about the Little Rock Nine. Um... Bernie Madoff, that whole scam situation, the Bernie Madoff years. Waco, I've been meaning to add Waco to my list. Let me add Waco. I watched like the four part series on it. I want to rewatch it before I do Waco, but I would love to do Waco. I was going to say I love Waco, but that's not what I mean. Um, do, 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 do. I do the 504 Little Walk. And then Ted and Kenny actually killing someone. would love to talk about that. Um, what else do we have on here? The Virginia Coal Wars. Don't really know what that is. Oh, so someone else mentioned ketchup. I have ketchup on my list. Was that you? Bernie Madoff would be cool. You should do the Fairbanks 4. It's bananas. Let me write that down. That was me, LOL. <laughs> Might not be your fault, but I'm watching on my TV and I do hear music quietly playing. Wait, I have an idea. Do you hear the music now? What about now? Did I fix it on question 7 of 10? Ketchup is barely FDA legal. What the fuck? That's kind of. Let me make it louder. Don't scare me with ketchup, guys. Yeah, ketchup is a safe food for a lot of people. <laughs> okay, question eight of ten. What did the patients experience at the asylum? I would love a history on the American adoption industry. Interesting. I don't know if I'm the woman for that job. 
I would love to hear a Madoff one. I'm kind of interested in Madoff because I don't know anything about Madoff and I kind of want to learn about it. You will never take my sweet ass Madoff sauce from me. It's better now, but back in the day is not so great. That's terrifying. Yes, they experienced all those things at the asylum. That one was a multiple right answers one. My head itches. I'm so happy with my nails. I just can't get over it. You guys can't see it because of the fucking ring light, but I love it. Because he made off with your money. <laughs> okay, we're almost to our last question. Question nine, how long was Bly in the asylum? Imagine being there for a year. I'd be deeply unwell. Have you done one Reagan's presidency? On the anniversary of his death, I did a Reagan stream. And I've done many anti-Reagan things. A House on Un-American Activities stream would be cool. Ooh, I like that idea. I've done a lot of Cold War stuff because I think it's something that most people don't understand and is really important. Do, do, do. All right, let's should. How Japan attacked Alaska in World War II. I'm not super into the military stuff, but I'll think about it. Why was Bly unsuccessful in the business world? Mm -hmm. You can never do enough anti-Reagan streams. Honestly, I could do another one. Let me add that to the list too. Have you done Red Scare and McCarthyism? Not as its own thing, but when I've talked about the Cold War, yes. I did a formation of suburb suburban communities. I did like a 1940s, 50s, like Americana thing. I can't remember what it's called. Does anyone remember what that was called? I still can't get over how she married Rich only to run the business into the ground. <laughs> like... Alrighty, in first place, Jamie Cowgirl, then Lucin, Monwan, Sam, Emily, Drama Queen, Cassie, Jamie, Dee Dee, Aaron, Stacy, Madeline, Erica, Tessa, and Carla. I will scroll through the rest. Nice job, nice job. We love to see it. Lonely Orphan Girl, Coffee Creamer 232, shouting out my people who are in the chat. Destiny, love the emoji. Loving that. We love, love. All the zeros, I'm assuming, had something happen and they departed us. All right, team. This was a joy. Love talking about Miss Nellie Bly with, with y'all. If anyone has a notes, memes, sorry, my little page is getting cut off. Slay Jamie Cowgirl, yes. If anyone has notes or memes or anything like that, I'm going to hang out here for a little bit longer. Oh, my God. Lemur banana. This is going in the thumbnail. This is the thumbnail. This is the thumbnail. This is it. Will it get taken down from YouTube? Absolutely it will. Absolutely it will. It'll be worth it. I might have to cut off this guy and this guy, but this is the thumbnail. That is iconic. Thank you, Lemur Banana. And I was just thinking, I was like, wow, I really don't fucking feel like making a thumbnail right now. <laughs> no, I don't have to. That was so fast. <laughs> Thank you for the education, mother. Current teacher loving the female history content. Thank you. And I like, it'll ne never top this. It will never top this. Wanted to make it as ridiculous as possible. No, it's perfect. No, you did it literally perfect. Loving the Canva font. Live, laugh, loving for that. It's perfect. Is it related to our main topic? Only the side topic, but it's iconic. All right, T. I loved with you. I laughed with you. Today we had like a very up and down amount of viewership. Honestly. Love the parental advisory. Okay, so what do we want to do next week? Let's, before we leave, let's figure out what we want to do next week. Um, do, 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 do. Around the world with Nellie Bly. Also, I put this on a slide, but I, it, I don't remember where it was and I don't, I know I didn't say it. When I looked, into Nellie Bly racism I know we talked about how like um her pseudonym and stuff like that the other thing that I found is that a couple of her novels are about like a daughter of a confederate and it's kind of like glamorizing old south vibes which is gross and not good but also if you think about it she was a white woman in the 1880s so I'm honestly shocked it's not a thousand times worse than it was not to say she's the best but you get what I'm saying um, oh my God, this meme of Trisha Paytas. Round the world with Nellie Bly. Thank you, book cover. 
the Benchtopia podcast talk about Nellie Bly a while. That's cool. Thank you for the thank you adult for the lesson. Um, I would love to see more shit like this. I've loved the deep dives, especially into women that history usually erases. I'm getting more into like the niche specific topic. Um, I have not done a video about globalization. Okay, this was so much fun. I'm going to make my thumbnail with Lemur, Balan Lemur Bananas iconic image and I'll pick an iconic chat for tonight. Thank you for joining with me. Thank you for living with me, laughing with me, all the things. I hope you have a great night. TTYL. I'll see you next week. Um, I was going to decide what we were going to do, but I usually end up changing my mind anyway. So I'll just figure it out, figure it out. Love you. Bye.